Okay, Chuck Doak over High Point Central. Busy time. Coach, a lot going on. Different directions. Headed all over the place right now. Getting ready today. And some practice work here at uh, Central. And you go over to uh, Simeon tonight. Do some skills challenge over there. And then you got a scrimmage over there Friday night. you got just a few kids this year. you got to get the most out of these kids. What's it going to take to maximize the effort from these young men this year? Well, it's, it's funny you say that because as we opened the door today, we picked up another seven kids. So we took our numbers from uh, 24 to, to 31 today. And that's, you know, that's, that's a good number for us. Now we got to get those kids acclimated and get them in, but we're, we're looking for you know some young men that can help us to platoon and get some kids in and off the field when we need to. So I guess it's good to have when you get to the number 30, at least you're making some good progress here. Get past 30 and keep adding on. Isn't that mostly the case? Yeah, that's that's kind of the idea. That's that's what you know. Obviously, the more numbers you have, the more opportunities you have to, to find the, the players that fit into special positions or key positions for you and gives you the opportunity to make substitutions where you don't fall off as bad from one to two. So that's that's what we're looking for right now. Even though you struggled some last year, some of you guys put up some pretty good numbers. You know those guys from last year's team back this year, and can they improve upon last year's numbers? Uh, yeah, a lot of our guys, uh, LaJalen Wilson, Demarion Dines, uh, Matthew Myers, Avery Chapman, uh, Julian Bays, Amon Wortham, you know, all these guys are, are key for us this year. They're all coming back. Uh, Jacob Gelzer, a young kid, he's going to get a lot of play time for us. Uh, Ricky Wooten, or uh, some people know him as Ty Wooten. Uh, I'm trying to think because we, we've got about 18 of those young men that came back from last year. What about uh, the coaching staff? Got some of the same coaches? You're building the staff here? Well, one of the things we did this year is we, we looked in our building to see what coaches we could bring from the building. And we got Coach Stafford coming in. We got Coach Rob Taylor, who's going to take over our offense this year. Um, he's a high point. He played here at High Point Central. Uh, we've got uh, John Oakley, who's, who's been in several places around the county. Uh, Martin, Marvin Lambert, who's coaching our D-line again. Another really good coach. Uh, coach Graves, who's here on staff. Um, you know, so... We, we've got a lot of guys that, that either have a whole lot of talent or are involved in the school. Anything about Coach Oakley? He's been a head coach. He's been an assistant coach. He's been a lot of places. Yeah, he's, he's going to take over our defense this year, and he's done a great job so far. Kids are responding really well to him, and, I mean, he's, he's very thorough. I love the way he goes about it, how he does practice. So you work all these years. What's the biggest thing about the challenge, biggest challenge about High Point Central football right now for you to try to get this program kind of on a level playing field with the rest of the teams in the area and your conference, be right with these guys? What's the biggest challenge about getting that where it needs to be? The biggest challenge for us right now is getting the connection between our middle school and our high school reconnected. Um, we, we just don't get the numbers of young men coming from the middle school that I'd like to see. And, you know, I, I know the team was small down there this year, but still, if we could get 25 or 30 young freshmen, that'd be that'd be a good start to a JV program. And then the second part of that is getting these young men to understand that summers are not all for football, that we get here in the morning, we work out for three hours, and then you go do whatever it is you got to do for the rest of the day. But we need to get everybody here. Uh, that's where I was talking about that core of young men that, that played for us last year. They were here every day. I mean, they were here every day. They worked their butt off. They, they did all the right stuff. So um, you, we're going to we're going to see a difference this year. Some people are starting to buy in. That is the main thing. People yes. are buying into the product. What you got, and they're working on it. Oh yeah, and and our, our GPA jumped almost a full point just with the kids that we have involved right now. I mean, last year our, our overall GPA was a little low. Now now we're pushing a 3-0 GPA for our kids. Um, then you know the number of waivers that that folks have to do. Um, you know, we, we don't, we've only had to do one or two of those for absences or whatever. So those, those kind of things are really, really beneficial for us. Uh, how do you keep these kids motivated, dedicated to the product here? Because it's tough. I know it is trying to get better, trying to get wins. So people tell me all the time it's all about W's. We get W's, we can build from there, and that does mean a lot. But how do you keep these guys motivated and dedicated to it? I honestly believe, though, that the, the W's doesn't build it as much as the coaches do. I think if the players believe in the coaches and, and trust the coaches, that the coaches are doing the right things for them, and I believe that they honestly want to come out and be part of something where there's caring and there, there's, there's teamwork and the you know, people want to work together and people want to have a part of it. I, I, wins or losses, wins are great, but I, I don't think that's the cornerstone of the program. How do you stay motivated, dedicated yourself? What keeps you coming back every year? Because you've been doing this for quite a while now. Uh, this is my, this should be my 31st year, and uh, it's the kids. I mean, I, I love working around the kids. I love love goofing off with the coaches and, and the coaches' meetings, you know, the, the times when we get to do stuff like we're doing today. Uh, you know, I have a 
I just like to watch the kids compete, being part of it, listening to the kids as they grow and mature during the season. It's just it's just a lot of fun. It's going to be a tough conference that you're in. Uh, how do you pinpoint some teams this conference, some teams you need to beat, and some business you got to take care of? <laughs> well, obviously we want to beat everybody. Uh, but, you know, with first three games, non-conference, and you got a week off before you go play Dudley, and every, everybody else has the same response to that, oh, it's Dudley. But, you know, they wake up every morning, put their pants on just like we do, except for there's 70 of them and there's 30 of us. So that's that's the fact that we just got to get over um, and stop letting them be the, you know, the, the big dogs in the conference and just start understanding that we're all doing the same thing. We, we just got to get better at it. Um, Eastern, uh, Eastern Guilford, throw the ball all over the place, run like crazy. That's a good little football team. But then everybody after that, you know, we should be in a good situation from, from those first two games on to, to to really secure some some big wins this season. So you got Dudley first game, Eastern second? Yep. Wow, gets the toughest, two toughest, probably the two toughest to kick off your conference campaign then. Yeah, it's 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 a, uh, and we got a week off before that. So, you know, we're, obviously we're going to put a lot of emphasis on that Dudley game. Got to make sure you don't get guys injured in those games. Keep those guys healthy coming out because you don't want to get beat up in the first two conference games. Not have the guys you need to play in those games you're supposed to win. Those other ones you have a chance in most of those games to maybe get a victory. I know Southern Guilford's rebuilding, Northeast is rebuilding. Got new coaches there. You got Atkins. You got Rockingham County new coach there, Doug Robertson. Uh, the list goes on and on. Yeah, there's and and there's a lot of good new coaches that are coming in. I mean, uh, Doug up at Rockingham, he's he's going to be hard to he's going to be hard to beat. You know, he's going to have his kids ready and they're going to do. Some some things. I saw what Southern was doing in a 7-on-7 earlier this year. They, they, they've got a good looks like they've got a good start to their rebuild. So, you know, we can't take anybody for granted. we got to go out and play every game and be ready to compete. But um, we, we were, we're going to give ourselves chances to win. Even a team like Smith, I talked to them in the season too, talked to them about a week or so back. It was surprising that they were like 4-6 and six last year. And I told the Smith coach, you get the 4 you're, you're probably, you get the 4-6, and six, you're one away from 500 football. You get the 500 football, you've got a foundation. I mean, you get, you're building when you get that four and six mark. Yeah, it's it's getting there. And Smith's always been so athletic. I mean, they're, 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 they've, they've got, they had good numbers last year. They were very athletic. Um, so we're athletic this year. Our numbers are growing. Like I said, in the last three days, our numbers have increased, you know, uh, by almost 10. So, you know, my concern is these young kids that are just coming in now don't have the conditioning that they're going to need, so we're going to have to fix that. But um, as we progress, but we, we, we're going to be in a good good situation. What is your schedule now? You practicing all the time in the afternoons now with school coming up pretty quick? Well, when school start, when the work day start on Monday, we'll go to the 4.30 practice schedule. Mm -hmm. um, we, we've been going at 6. We've been going 6 to 8.30 um, here during the summer just to try to get acclimated to this temperature and this time of the year so that we have to go play in it here in a couple days. You know, it's not anything new to us. What's your game plan? Just kind of the game plan on the top of the table going that uh, scrimmage on Friday night. What's the game plan for Friday night? Control the clock. Control the clock. Control the clock, first downs, keep them off the field as much as possible. Uh, play a little trickery. Uh, well, since we're not doing special teams, we won't have a whole lot of trickery, but have a little fun, you know, experiment with some things and see what it looks like. But, you know, not go so crazy that we show our entire offense and defense all in one scrimmage. Uh, you got some of those uh, out, outside receivers that like to run pretty well. Can you catch up, catch up on those uh, end arounds and jet sweeps and like to run? Yeah, we, we got we got some guys that are pretty good, going to be pretty good at bubble and tunnel and stuff like that. You got Mike Covington out there. He's 6'3 receiver and get down the field pretty well, elevate pretty good, catch the ball. So, yeah, we're, we're going to have a lot of fun with it. Coach, always good to see you. We go back a long way. We're back to Southeast School for Junior Legion Baseball in the summers with Charlie Panel and uh, yeah. had Buck Bain, all those guys back in those days. Man, you had some pretty good teams down there. You might even have had I don't think Blake Butler played for you. I think he actually played for uh, the guy down there in uh, Eastern Randolph. Played for him down there. But uh, guys, you had a lot of talent those kids back in those days. Yeah, they, they were they were a lot of fun to coach. I still keep in touch with a lot of those young men too. That that was that was a, a really interesting, fun group of young men to be around, especially in baseball. And then you transfer from there, I think, over and moved on toward Eastern Guilford for a while there, too. Yeah, one year, and then we decided to move on to Northwest for a year, and then over to Southwest for 11 years. 11 years at Southwest, and you went down to the, uh, down towards Charlotte area for a while, We went to Cata for a semester. That's an hour and 40 minute drive I hope I don't ever have to make again. I, I loved the, what we were doing down there, but when it comes to time to buy a home and sell a home, and you can't get it bought, or you can't get one sold. 
God's trying to tell you something. Time to head back to the old stomping grounds, huh? <laughs> yep. Came back to Southwest, came there, and then you came over here. You weren't ready to coach football, I think, or baseball either one. You came over here, going to be like an assistant coach at one time. Next thing you know, uh, the door opens, you're head coach and probably coaching two sports. Yeah, well, we, we, I came over to be the head baseball coach and assistant uh, football coach. And then, like I said, the door opened, and then here I am. So. Coach, here you are. you got work to do today. Thanks for giving us the time you've given us. Always good to talk to you. I may call you on Thursday night some. I probably shouldn't because you said you got, I don't have a JV team, but I'm always just in the habit of calling you up making sure and checking on you guys. Just keep up the good work. Always good to see you. Let's keep these conversations going maybe about uh, five or six more years. All right. Thanks, sir. Appreciate it, Andy.